So, the Age of Flash games has technically come and gone, but thanks to the efforts of Blue Maxima and many others, Flash games have been successfully preserved for all future generations. And because of that, I'm back once again with another video on Flash games, though this one's a bit different from my last one since I'm going to be focusing on one series only, since this one series in particular has three games. That series is Combat Instinct. A uh, science fiction first-person shooter series developed and released by McFrenton, hope I'm pronouncing your name right, it was actually the second Combat Instinct that I played first, though obviously we're going to start with a 1 here. It just makes sense. McFretton dropped Combat Instinct 1 out of the Newgrounds portal on July 15th of 2000 with a broken preloader and a total file size of 1.86 megabytes. Do you believe our internet was so bad back then that that file size was considered cumbersome? Even Australian internet these days could handle that just fine. In spite of its preloader issues though, Combat Instinct was pretty much universally loved on the portal, it raising the bar for flash shooters at the time, and even managing to make it onto the Newgrounds flash history for the year of its release. Story of Combat Instinct Pretty simple. A thousand years ago, your home planet of Hyvez was a humble, peaceful planet. Then one day, a bunch of evil alien invaders show up and absolutely push your planet shit in, mainly because you're a bunch of technologically backwards human XBs. Half the planet's population ends up dead or enslaved by the invaders. Flash forward a thousand years, and now your kind has constructed their own fleet of badass warships to bring the fight to the bastards who attacked you generations ago. Your fleet takes to the skies and warps to the enemy's location, and the battle begins. Level 1's a pretty simple turret section. You blast all these little ships on top of the bigger triangular ships too. Damn, look at all those rad flash explosions. These were amazing at the time. This section ends with a little boss fight against one of the bigger triangle ships. You can shoot the plasma barrels to stop its attacks, and you have to shoot the cockpit to bring it down, obviously. After that, mission is over. Well done. <laughs> Maybe you're useful after all. <laughs> okay, Dad. Level 2 has you drawing some Space Mac 10s to fight off the aliens who have boarded your ship after their attack pods penetrated the ship's hull. Interestingly, in this gore-soaked segment, as well as the first since I forgot to mention it then, instead of just getting a life bar, the game simply tracks the amount of enemies you've killed and the hits you've taken to give you a score at the end of a given segment. Basically, you can't die, and as a result, there's no pressure on you, really. Just kill as many as you can while avoiding as many hits as possible, which might not be 100% possible to evade all the damage because of this little section right here. After this, you grab a nearby sniper rifle and start a sniper space duel, shooting from your ship to the enemies while they fire back at you. Odd. Not sure that'd be safe in space, but sure, I don't question wacky old Flash games. Then you flee back through the ship after the ship of the pilot you just sniped crashes into yours. Clearly you didn't think this through. You run to the hangar, slaughtering aliens along the way before hopping into a fighter and escaping just as the capital ship explodes. The final level begins thereafter, a fighter level where you start out blasting some ships in space before descending down to the planet for a strafing run on the planet's nuclear reactors. The game ends when your fleet begins carpet bombing the planet from space, their bombs hitting this big old nuclear reactor here, which, well, that goes about as well as you'd think. <laughs> Combat Instinct 2 saw its release within the same year, but on December 13th of 2000. Thankfully, 2 picks up right where the first leaves off. Your ship, alongside a bunch of others, crashing to the planet's surface after the massive nuclear detonation. You eject from your fighter just before crashing and end up surviving, but you're now irradiated and need to head to a decontamination chamber, which thankfully can be found in one of your crashed capital ships. You rack your space shotgun and begin your journey. 2 is a pretty simple on-rail shooter experiences, but with some differences from the first game. This time out, you do have a health bar instead of the kills slash hits taken meters, so now you have to worry about dying. Don't worry about that too much though, since now you have a hit the deck button, which you can use to avoid enemy fire of all kinds. The aliens this time out are also a little bit more refined versus the first game, sporting upgraded looks, and come in a variety of candy colored variants with different weapons for each. Soldiers, snipers, grenadiers, biker boys, heavy weapons guys, and there's some rocketeers too. The cool part of these various aliens is that they have context sensitive zones on their bodies that you can 
shoot for different effects. For instance, a headshot will typically kill in one hit and causes the target's head to explode with some fun gore. Gutshot stuns them for a moment, and a second gutshot will finish them off. There's a handful of other effects with certain enemies to surprise you as well. Shooting a grenadier's belt, for instance, will make all the grenades on his belt explode. Same goes for the rocket trooper's rocket pads, though that area is much smaller. Heavy troopers have extra armor plating in their heads, so you can't just kill them in one hit. This was a cool little feature for sure, especially for an early 2000s flash game. It really showed some cool stuff you could do with that engine. Additionally, there was a minigun you could pick up and use too, another pretty novel feature at the time. If you were curious about the origins of the various voice lines used in Combat Instinct 2, since honestly I wondered the same when I was young, the voice callouts are the Herc Marines from Half-Life. And the horrifying screams of agony are via the game's Soldier of Fortune. Anyway, you blast your way through some more alien scum and get to the decontamination chamber in time. After this, you link up with a few of your fellow boys who have a surprise for you. The actual natives of the planet you've attacked. Another conquered race, they're obviously pretty pissed off at those other aliens too. That on top of the mass industrialization poisoning their planet, and as it turns out, these natives have also built their own armada to strike back at the evil aliens. So the soldiers of Hyves team up with these new guys to bring down the evil ones once and for all. But you gotta get back into the fight in space first, so you and your boys decide to head for the local airfield and jack some ships so you can rejoin the battle. Unfortunately, one of your friends, Baldy, gets his head plucked like a grape by an alien sniper, and you charge on them to take revenge, leading to another sniper segment before you and your remaining comrade raid the local airfield and fly off the planet. Once again, Combat Instinct is capped off with a fighter segment. You blast some regular ships before heading into the boss fight, where you have to crack open the enemy capital ship's engine core and blast the engine ten times to be declared victorious. On to the finale of this trilogy. Combat Instinct 3 arrived two years after the second on September 8th of 2002 and picks up once again right where the previous game left off. You and your new alien allies are victorious over the evil alien menace. The Havazians give a hearty thank you to their new friends, but as it turns out, your allies now want something in return for the aid they just gave you. Space on your home planet for their entire species. Space you obviously don't have. The aliens begin to make threats and your kind decide to say, get fucked, and another war initiates just as soon as the last one ended. Since you're so depleted from the last battle, the Hyves Navy decides discretion is the better part of valor after one of their flagships gets slagged almost immediately. Three subverts expectations by starting with the fighter pilot level instead of ending with it. Crazy. You hop into a fighter and buy time for your capital ships to escape, having to survive and strafe enemy fighters for three minutes in total. Doing that, your battered fleet successfully makes the jump away from the battlefield, then begins the long journey back to Hyves. Surprise, surprise though, the alien bastards traced you back to your home planet and are now launching a full-on invasion of Hyves. The aliens land on Hyves but are stopped by the planet's gravity, thankfully making them easy targets on the ground. <laughs> Just kidding. They transform into far faster, more aggressive forms and begin the ground invasion, heading towards the capital of the planet, Hyvesopolis. Not a very creative name, admittedly. You're dropped planet side and told to get to the capital and aid in its defense. You draw your sick combat shotgun and begin the trek there. Things essentially play out similarly gameplay wise to the second now. An on rails FPS, but with a good amount of surprises to keep you on your toes. For instance, a good portion of the new alien attackers are melee based, and these are mixed in with normal ranged foes. You can still take cover from enemy gunfire but melee units have the ability to rip you out of cover, making you vulnerable to gunshots and to them goring you with their blades. Additionally, you have a handful of different guns available to you now, ones you can switch through at your leisure, as long as you have the ammo, obviously. The mini gun returns, of course, giving you more firepower per second, but in addition to that, you have a rocket launcher for when you're getting really annoyed with your foes, and a target painter for when you're really even more annoyed with your foes. There's also this plasma launcher, which gives foes pretty nicely. You'll need this up to Arsenal too, since these aliens are way more durable and far more mobile than your previous enemies. A good headshot will still put him down now, but you have to contend with these little jackal shields that block your gunfire, on top of the fact that these fuckers are jumping all over the place and just being difficult targets to hit in general. Aliens will also constantly have air support, which is an annoyance for sure. You have to be way more cautious hitting the deck now too, with a new mix of enemies being thrown at you. You'll have some support from fellow ground troops too, too, but as the game tells you, they're basically worthless and might only occasionally kill something. Fucking conscripts, man. Can't hit shit. I definitely enjoyed the way up difficulty this time out, though. It's an appreciable jump from the last two games, which are honestly pretty breezy experiences. Anyway, you battle your way to the capital and finally aid in the city's defense. Here you get a pretty sweet cutscene showing off all your capital city's defenses, as well as giving a few little fun kill scenes. Gotta say, I love the design of the minigun in this game, and having the rocket launcher built in the back, which leads to the this scene.
3 also subverts expectations by not including a sniper level. Just this little crosshair cutscene that makes you think it's coming. The battle ends with the aliens just deciding to blast all the planet's defenses from orbit. Strange how they didn't do that in the first place, but I guess they don't want to damage the planet too much before they try to take it over. The alien bastards are now inside the capital, and it's up to the ground forces to drive them out. Here, you'll encounter the aliens' most fierce ground forces. These big fat monsters with bitch tits that explode after you kill them. Meaning you have to take cover, so you don't get covered in alien spooge. After you exterminate the Xeno scum in your capital, your forces in the sky finish up the remaining alien vessel, sending their capital ship crashing to Hyvis' surface. One sole survivor stumbles out of the ship's wreckage, and in a last-ditch effort to take Hyvez down, begins vacuuming up all the corpses of his fallen brothers, as well as the destroyed ships, too. He forms up into a biomechanical abomination intent on destroying everything here. You hop into a tank that quickly morphs into a Gatling tank, and the final boss battle of the series begins. The giant can attack you in a multitude of ways, sword, laser cannon, and other shit too. You have to blast the bastard's limbs off over the course of the fight. My advice? Just keep shooting until it's dead. You minigun the monster to death and it dies, of course. The game ends with you riding off into the sunset, an era of peace finally dawning on your beleaguered peoples after three games of constant warfare. You know, I didn't intend on focusing one whole video on one Flash game franchise, but I think in this case it's warranted. Combat Instinct was truly a game changer in Flash games for me. They were awesome, and really showed what the Flash engine was capable of when it came to gaming, even if Flash hadn't been intended for games or animation even. I think from now on I might focus a little harder when it comes to Flash games, since there's a lot of series out there that have a ton of different parts to them. I know a lot of my favorite games have at least three in the series minimum too. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this focus on a random Flash game series that I love. As always, I'm Hades Manticore, and this here channel is City State Manticore. Thanks a ton for watching, be sure to smash that like button, and subscribe for more content as well. I'll see y'all in the next video. Goodbye.